right now. So let's hear what Steve Bloom has to say about playing in Guild Wars 2. You started off on 43 for a take 43. I'm Steve Bloom and I play Ritlock Brimstone. Char. Ritlock is, uh, he's amazing. He's, um, uh, I, I think that besides having a warrior's heart, he has uh, uh, the purity of someone that comes from um, a place that wouldn't necessarily be as barbaric. Uh, and, uh, and that shows through every now and then. He really cares about the people around him. The fool is on death's door, and you could have been killed rescuing him. Favorite thing about Ritlock is actually something... I found this morning when I was looking stuff up on Wikipedia, he was sort of the runt of the litter. He was, uh, they, they called him Runtlock, I guess, when he was uh, training as a young kitty cat. And uh, I was kind of that kid too, as the smallest and the weakest and bullied a lot. And uh, having to fight through that emotionally and physically um, made me a much stronger person uh, as I uh, navigated the world. And I think that that's, worked in his favor also. For me, Ritlock's voice has remained the same pretty much. It, he, he is who he is, but um, I think that um, just carrying the weight with him that he unleashed Balthazar uh, unwittingly, uh, there's, there's some guilt there, and I think that that comes through every now and then, and that wasn't necessarily present in the very beginning. I think he was just trying to figure out his place and his new surroundings, but... Um, that, that guilt, I think, has become a factor for him and maybe a, a driving factor for him. <sighs> it's true that we're stuck. The bridge towers in front of Joko's fortress make it impossible to approach. If I was to give Ridlock some advice, I would tell him to let go of the guilt. It's time. Uh, he's a good guy. He didn't mean to do it. And, um, and so odd that it was worth it. It was worth it. I love emotionally difficult scenes um, for... Uh, a large part of my life, I tried to hide vulnerability. I tried to hide emotion. Um, that's kind of what a lot of us are taught in our families. And um, when I have the opportunity to do that through any character, I relish it. I, I like to go to the deep, dark places. I love to uh, bring stuff up that's uncomfortable for me. The, the more uncomfortable, the better. So uh, as long as I don't blow my throat out doing it, um, I'm willing to, to go to uh, every emotional depth required for the character. It's actually fun for me. I don't think I know anything about Ritlock that nobody else knows because you guys, you guys know everything about this game. You know everything about our characters. You tell me what my life story is. Um, the only thing that uh, I would say that I do know is that uh, there's this guy who is not necessarily a warrior on a daily basis who is voicing this character for you. So if you've never met me in person, um, I'm, a, I'm a lover, not a fighter. So take that to the bank. We'll keep the Awakened off your back, guaranteed. So many great moments in voicing Ridlock. I, it's hard to pick one out. I think the, the greatest moments for me actually were after the fact, when I go to conventions and I see how uh, Ridlock has affected people on, out there in the world because I'm sort of insulated in this little capsule here, this padded room. When we're recording this, we don't know what the response is going to be until we get out there in the world. And, and uh, people come to me at signings at conventions all across the world with their war bands talking about their experience and to um, embody any character that has an afterlife like that and affects people and touches people makes everything worthwhile to me. Okay, Char, we'll take point. You with me? And they're like, nah. We're going to go get a Starbucks. You tell us when you're done. <laughs>